This is part 130 of SQL Server tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss offset fetch clause in SQL Server. Offset fetch clause makes it very easy to implement paging. This clause is introduced in SQL Server 2012. It returns a page of results from the result set. Order by clause is required. Here is the syntax. Select star from your table name. Order by the column list by which you want to sort the data. Offset and then the number of rows that you want to skip. For example, if you want to skip first 10 rows, then you specify 10 as the value for rows to skip and then you use the rows keyword followed by that fetch next and the number of rows that you want to fetch for example if you want to fetch the next set of 10 rows then you will specify 10 as the value for rows to fetch and then you use rows only keyword this syntax is very readable look at this select star from your table name order by column list offset the number of rows you want to skip fetch next the number of rows that you want to fetch Let's use this table on the right here for the examples in this demo. Notice this table has got four columns, ID, name, description, and price. At the moment, in the image, we only see 10 rows, but in the table that I have here, there are actually 100 rows. So as I scroll down, notice we have 100 rows in the table. And here is the SQL script to create the table, and this script will populate the data within that table. Now, if you look at the data that we have here, look at the names, product 1, product 2, product 3, so on and so forth. And look at the description, product description 1, product description 2, product description 3, so on and so forth. And look at the price, 10, 20, 30, etc. Now, the data is actually computed by using this while loop right here. So let's quickly look at this script. So here I have a variable at start of type integer. We have initialized that to a value of one. And then I have two variables here, name and description. And then here we have our while loop at start less than or equal to 100. That's our Boolean expression. At the moment, start value is one. So one is less than or equal to 100. That evaluates to true. So it comes inside the loop and then computes the value for name variable. Name equals product dash and whatever value we have within the start variable at the moment, the value within the start variable is one. So product dash one will be the value within this name variable. Similarly, description will have product description dash one. And then we are using those variables within this insert query right here. Insert into TBL products values. The first variable value will be for the name column. The second variable value will be for the description column. And then we have the value for price column here. Look at what we are doing. We are multiplying the start variable by 10. At the moment, start variable value is 1. 1 multiplied by 10 is 10. So for the first row within the table, product name will be product dash 1. Product description will be product description dash 1 and the price will be 10, okay? And then we are incrementing the value of start variable by one. And then it inserts the data for the second row. So this goes on until, you know, start variable value is 101. When the value become uh, 101, at that point, this condition becomes false and it will break out of the loop. That's how we ended with 100 rows in this table. I'll have the script available on my blog in case you need it. All right, now what we want to do is using this offset fetch clause that's introduced in SQL Server 2012, we want to skip the first 10 rows and then fetch the next set of 10 rows. Okay, so select star from your table name. Remember with offset fetch clause, order by clause is required. Order by, let's sort the data by ID column. And then we use the offset keyword and the number of rows that you want to skip. So we want to skip 10 rows. And then we use fetch next and the number of rows that we want to fetch. So let's fetch the next set of 10 rows. And then we use rows only keyword. So when we execute this, it should skip the first set of 10 rows and retrieve the next set of 10 rows when the data is sorted by ID column. So that means we should get rows 11 to 20. So let's look at that. Notice, first of all, we get 10 rows and look at the ID column. We get um, from ID 11 to 20 as expected. Now, for some reason, if you want to skip the first set of 20 rows and then re retrieve the next set of 10 rows, you can simply change the number of rows that you want to skip. So when we execute this, we should get rows from 21 to 30. For some reason, if you want to get the next set of 30 rows, you simply change that value to 30. So now we should get rows from 21 to 50. 
So it's that easy implementing paging using offset fetch clause in SQL Server 2012. And we have that same example right here. Typically, in a real world, you know, from a front-end application where you are implementing paging, be it ASP.NET Web Forms application or Windows Forms application. So from the front-end applications, you would typically send page number and page size, right, to the server-side stored procedure. And that stored procedure, depending on the values for page number and page size, it should return the correct set of rows. So let's actually come up with a stored procedure that can actually do that. I'm actually going to convert this code into a stored procedure. So let's create a procedure. Let's call this spget rows by page number and page size. And this stored procedure is going to have two parameters. At page number, type is going to be integer. At page size, again, the data type is going to be integer as begin. And let's end our stored procedure right there. Okay, so select star from TBL products, order by ID column, offset. At the moment, we are hard coding the number of rows that we want to skip. Instead of that, I'm going to use the values of these two parameters to compute the value for rows that we want to skip. So here, I'm going to use page number parameter. So at page number, I'm going to subtract one from that. And whatever value we get, we are going to multiply that by page size parameter value. Okay, so those will be the number of rows that we want to skip. And we want to fetch, you know, the next set of 10 rows, you know, or whatever value that we have within this parameter. Okay, so let's understand this. So for example, if we pass page number as one, that means the end user wants to see the first page of data. And let's say the page size that the user has selected on the front end is 10. That means page number will be one, page size will be 10. So that means we don't want to skip any rows. We want to skip zero rows. So this expression should evaluate to zero. Page number is one, one minus one is zero. Zero multiplied by page size, page size is 10. So zero multiplied by 10 is zero. So skip zero rows and then fetch next you know what value we have in page size parameter 10 so it's going to fetch the next set of 10 rows so when the page number becomes 2 so if the user wants to see what data we have on page number 2 so page number will be 2 2 minus 1 is 1 1 multiplied by page size that is 10 so 1 multiplied by 10 is 10 so we want to skip 10 rows and then retrieve the next set of 10 rows. So this stored procedure should give us the data that we expect. So let's go ahead and create this procedure. Now, if we pass, so let's copy the stored procedure and execute it. So execute, that's our procedure. The value for page number is going to be one and page size is going to be 10. That means we should get rows from one to 10. Notice that we get rows from 1 to 10. If I say I want second page data, now we should get rows from 11 to 20. If we supply a value of 3 for page number, then we should get rows from 21 to 30. So look at this stored procedure, how simple it is using offset fetch clause in SQL Server. We have the exact same stored procedure right here. Thank you for listening and have a great day.